So I think a lot of people want to get into wood turning, but there's one big obstacle standing in their way. No lathe. And you know, lathes are kind of expensive, even the cheap ones. And that doesn't include the grinder, the tools, chucks, extra face plates, all of that stuff. It starts to add up really quickly. And so you need the cost of the lathe to be a little bit lower. And well, this is my channel, so if I need something to be cheap, I build it. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna build a lathe that's roughly the size, capacity, and power of this lathe for half the price, or maybe even less. We'll do it with readily available materials and common tools that most people already have in their shop. I get kind of excited when I talk about this. Is that weird? Now obviously, I'm not the first person on YouTube to build a lathe. For instance, there's Izzy Swan's fantastic, drill-powered, half-hour lathe. And then Matthias Wandel has an amazing portable lathe that actually runs on wooden bearings and still works well. He even turned a bowl on the thing. But I think most people who want to get into wood turning want a larger format machine that can do things like chair legs and baseball bats, pool cues, large bowls and hollow forms. For this project to be worth it, we've got to make a lathe that can do all of those things. And that sounds like a tall order, but I don't think it's that bad. Let me explain. You might look at the headstock on a commercial lathe and think, yeah, I'm not going to build something like that in my basement. But what's going on here isn't nearly as complicated as it looks. The most important part of the lathe is called the spindle, and that's pretty much just a metal tube that's sitting in bearings and being driven by a pulley that's attached to a motor with a belt. All of this stuff is really basic. And then this lathe happens to have a mechanical speed control. It's called a Reeves drive. We're not going to build one of these, but we don't need to because there's simpler ways to control the speed of a lathe, and we can use mechanisms that you can build in your basement. It's not that big of a deal. And then we've got the bed of the lathe and the ways. And in this case, on even this cheap lathe, the bed and the ways are a big, beefy hunk of cast iron. And we are not going to be making cast iron pieces for this lathe. For the ways of our lathe, we're going to use black iron pipe. It's a good material for this because it's strong, rigid, straight, and I bought 10 feet of it for $17. So I'm going to cut the pipe in half and arrange the two five-foot sections about eight inches apart. Then I'm going to set them into three wooden blocks. The first two blocks are going to support the headstock, while the third block keeps everything stable and parallel. Of course, I also have to figure out what I'm going to make these blocks out of. Here's what I've got. This is a beam. It's made of teak. Perfect for this application. Now I realize most people don't have a chunk of teak sitting around, but this was dumpster wood. So go out and see what's around. A good solid beam will do you. You could use construction lumber or you could glue up several other pieces of wood, hardwood or softwood, until you've got something big and solid that you can drill and slide the pipe through. Drilling out the holes for the blocks that make up the bed is kind of tricky. The outside diameter of the pipe is more than an inch and a quarter, but it's a lot less than an inch and a half. So I don't have any drill bits that really work. So I drill through with my inch and a quarter spade bit, and then you can kind of ream out a hole a little bit larger if you just grab the thing in a hand drill and sort of rotate the bit in kind of an orbiting pattern. And you go really slowly in and out, and over time the hole widens up and you can get a good fit. Now, if you've done a good job boring out the holes, they're going to be a really tight fit. And that's a good thing, because you want your lathe to be as rigid and solid as possible. A tight fit in those holes is really going to help. But to actually get the pipe into the wooden blocks isn't going to be easy. You've really got to use whatever you have handy. Me? I've got concrete floors. So that's what I'm using. After I got that first piece on, I used a combination of a hammer, a block of wood, a mallet, and even a pipe clamp to squeeze the other pieces of wood onto the pipes. And it all worked out fine, except that when I was done, I realized I had introduced a little bit of twist into the whole thing. 
And that's not a big deal. I just clamped one end to the table, let the other end hang off, I gave it a few tugs manually, and a couple taps with the dead blow. And then when I was done, everything was solid and flat. Time to build the headstock. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. It's kind of an experiment for me. I usually make videos about client work or things I do for my house, or I make things just because I feel like being creative. This is a new thing where I'm trying to make a machine tool that I actually don't need. I already own a lathe. I don't need another one. I'm making this and I'm documenting the build because I think wood turning is fun and interesting and incredibly useful and that more people would get into it if there was an affordable, good lathe that they could build themselves. So I'm trying to take the time to do it and document it and put it out there for free. So if you enjoy this, if you're getting something out of it, consider going over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and checking out the early access, rewards, and exclusive content that I have just for my patrons. Patreon makes these videos possible, and the more patrons I get, the more time I can spend trying to make woodworking more accessible, more fun, and cheaper. So if you feel like you can, go over and throw a couple dollars in the hat. I appreciate it so much. Now I want this lathe to have at least a 12-inch swing, so the spindle has to be elevated a lot above the bed that I already built. To build my headstock assembly, I decided to use angled pieces of 4x4 construction timber. The idea here is that that would give me sort of a pyramid structure that would be really strong and also streamlined and out of my way while I'm turning. I decided on an angle of 70 degrees for the uprights, but then I had to cut four pieces of 4x4 at exactly 70 degrees. I took one of my small crosscut sleds and quickly adapted it into a jig. I wouldn't usually do this, but this piece demands a lot of accuracy, and it's better to build a jig and get it right the first time than spend a lot of time screwing around. After these pieces were done, I used a different sled and the table saw to make dados in the sides that would accept pieces of hardwood to make a strong and rigid structure for the headstock. Now the basic structure here is really good but I have to have a way to tie these uprights down to the wood blocks that make up the bed. And that's tricky because of the way that they're slanted and the fact that I have an end grain to flat grain connection. The best way to do this is probably with a piece of hardware. So, I've jigged up my drill press with one of the offcuts from making the uprights. And that gives me the correct angle so that when I take one of my uprights and slide it in, I'll be able to use this Forstner bit to drill straight through and make a countersink that's going to hold a washer, and a lag bolt. But that did not work. Yeah, that really did not work. So, I adjusted my jig because I realized that the Forstner bit just couldn't bite down on that steep of an angle. So I had to give it something flat to bite into while it worked its way into the vertical piece. So I rearranged all my jigging and I tried it again. This time it worked really well. Now the headstock portion of the lathe is complete, and it is extremely rigid and stable. I think it's going to do great, even under load and torque from the motor. Now it's time to assemble the spindle. And even in a fancy commercial lathe, a spindle is just a shaft running in bearings. And we're not going to do something as fancy as a lathe that you would buy, but we can get really close with some simple off-the-shelf components. For the bearings, we're going to use these. These are roller bearings, that's the silver part in the middle right here, and they're in what's called pillow blocks, and they're these cast iron pieces that hold them. These are also called self-aligning bearings, so when you put the shaft in here and the shaft in there, the bearings move themselves and align in a nice straight line, so your shaft is going to run true pretty much no matter what. For the shaft, I'm actually going to use this tent stake that I just found on the ground. It's actually made of nice, mild steel, it's got a nice diameter, and it has a 60 degree point which we'll be able to use. So this headstock is sturdy and it looks cool. And what I really want to do is just plow ahead with the construction and keep making this thing. But now that this is actually made, this is a really good time to stop and consider whether I designed it well and whether it's going to do what I want it to do. When I first designed this lathe, I really wanted it to have at least 12 inches of swing. Because in my head, 12 inches is kind of the minimum for a full-size lathe. So I had 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches in my head. And as I was building this, I kept measuring up from the ways 
to the spindle. And I've got 12 inches, which is great, except that's not how swing is measured. Swing is the distance from the spindle to the ways doubled. So a lathe with a 12 inch swing has the spindle six inches above the ways. I've built a lathe with 24 inches of swing, which is huge. This thing, in theory, will swing a piece of wood. I can't even get it on camera. This big? Here, there. This big. 24 inches is insane for this. So, I've still got the jig that I used to make the four posts. I'm gonna disassemble the headstock, take a couple inches off the top and bottom of both, and then reassemble it. Now that I have a correctly sized headstock, I can insert the spindle, mark, drill, and screw down the pillow blocks. Then I can put the spindle back in with a pulley and add a shaft collar to deal with axial thrust and keep the spindle in place during turning. Then I can hook the whole thing up to an old three-quarter horse motor I got off a junk bandsaw. I wire in a switch and a plug. I clamp everything down to the bench to give the belt tension. And then it's time to test it out. I don't know, I'm a little nervous now. This has taken me like a week. I just need it to turn and not, not fly apart. Let me get some safety glasses, hold on. Okay, I have not tried this beforehand. This is the first time I'm turning this thing on. Here goes nothing. Well, it didn't explode. I haven't been electrocuted. Vibration's really minimal. There's, there's nothing, honestly. The shaft looks like it's running really true. I'll put a dial indicator on it later and check it out. The belt tension is fluctuating a lot, but that's fine. I'm gonna put a tensioner on at some point. It works! <laughs> so that's about all I can get done in a week, but that's also pretty good for one week. I built a bed, ways, a headstock, and a spindle, and everything works. I also painted it, because it was hideous. If I were doing this whole project over again from scratch, I would change the way I put the pipes into the wood blocks. That whole thing with undersizing the holes and then pounding the pipes in, that was way too much trouble and it introduced a lot of problems like twist in the bed. I would do it a different way. These pipes measure about 33 millimeters outside diameter. So I would just get a 34 millimeter Forstner bit and bore the holes out of the wood with that. That'll still give you a pretty snug fit. And then you can fight twisting by just drilling holes through the wood and the pipe and tapping in a scrap steel pin. You could use a big nail, a bolt, really anything. That'll give you a much easier assembly and still a very rigid design. I've done exactly that with this end block and I can definitely tell there's a difference. So I found a couple of 34 millimeter Forstner bits and I've linked to them down in the description along with all the parts, tools, and materials that I used in this build. If you want to follow along, you can start collecting the stuff right now. Also, at the end of this series, I'm going to have a very detailed set of plans available with all the measurements and a complete parts list with links where to get everything. So, what's next? Well, one of the cool things about a lathe is it's one of the only machines that can help build itself. So you can make parts for a lathe using a partially completed lathe. And that's what I'm going to do, because the next thing I need is a power transmission that's going to let me shift speeds, and for that, I need pulleys. I need a lot of pulleys. And I don't know if you've looked on Amazon or anywhere else recently, but pulleys, especially step pulleys, cost an absurd amount of money. Even the cheap die-cast ones and aluminum ones cost, like, a lot. So we're going to have to make them. We're going to make them from scratch, and we're going to do it using this machine. And before I go, I want to shout out Kressel Anderson and his amazing channel, Maker Size. Kressel built a metal lathe, a machine lathe, in his garage using cast aluminum that he melted down in his own foundry that he also built. So when I was thinking about making my lathe, I thought, well, if that lunatic Kressel can make a metal lathe in his garage, I can probably build a wood lathe in my basement. And he also showed a lot of techniques and ideas that I applied directly to my machine. So his channel is a big inspiration to me, and he does not have enough subscribers. I mean, he's got more than me, but still not enough. 
So go over and subscribe to Maker Size. You will not regret it. And I just want to say that I'm really looking forward to finishing this project and showing people how they can make an awesome lathe for a small amount of money. So stick with me. It's going to be great. Thanks for watching.